The elusive, the exclusive Illusionist deck is here for review. Guys, this deck was only for Illusionist employees up until now. I got my hands on it, so not a lot of people know about uh, this deck of cards. And the ones who do have only seen maybe the frontal image of the tuck case. That being said, not a lot of people know what's inside the box or what the tuck case even looks like. Uh, front, back, side to side, top and bottom. So today we will dive in and show you what this deck of cards is about. Before I do get started though, I do wanna say I know nothing about this deck of cards, so if it comes to design, if I miss anything on th that was important you know, in the cards, please leave it down below because I would love to know. That being said, the front of the tuck case is really cool. Uh, this is a picture that most of you guys have seen if you follow them on Instagram, um, but it was very exclusive and um, nobody really knew much about this deck of cards. The one thing that I do see here that's interesting is that red speck. I don't know what it means, but it has to mean something. If you know what it is, tell me, please. Um, the company was founded in 2001, so you get 2001. And then you just get the illusionist playing card, illusionist playing cards, right up in the front. Other than that, I mean, you do have some um, suits here on the sides and some scroll work. Really nice, really pretty front of the tuck case. The back of the tuck case is really nice as well. It says Beyond Belief, which is kind of like their slogan. Um, and then you get two hands and a card floating in between. I don't know if uh, that's supposed to be some sort of uh, levitation, kind of like the hummingbird or uh, whatnot, but that's what we see on the back of the tuck. The side of the tuck, you do see Illusionist playing cards, or Illusionist playing card company, rather. On the other side, you get creators, conjurers, cardists. That's pretty cool. The bottom does have the copyright info because Illusionist did print it. And lastly, the top just has the E-Deck, which is what it's most commonly referred to as the E-Deck. That is the tuck case. Let's go ahead and open up the flap here and I'll show you what the flap is or what it has. It just has like a little lightning bolt up there. All right, the inside of the tuck case is the back design of the cards. Really nice. The feeling of the box is very, um, it's, it's, it's papery, but not Theory 11 papery. Um, I, I can't really explain. Uh, it just feels like maybe the uh, white Madison Rounders box, uh, something maybe like the King's deck. Um, not the gold tuck though. It feels really good, it's smooth, and you can feel the ink on there. The ink is pretty grippy. So um, then the tabs here have uh, two arrows and uh, this one has two keys, right? The cards themselves, the box has that design throughout. The cards themselves have that back design as I showed you. So let's get that out of the way just because it's really simple. We'll just knock the back design out of the way. And that's pretty much it. There's not much else to say. It's a lot of little lines, and that leads me to believe that this is marked in some way. I just don't know the marking system. What do I have to say about the back design? I think it is very simple, it is very elegant, and I think cardists will really appreciate that, but magicians as well. Um, this kind of reminds me of a NOC or knock deck, right? If you look at it from far away. Um, but obviously from close up, you do get a little bit more detail, some patterns, and just depending what angle you look at it at, uh, it looks different ways. The stock is, I think, a crushed stock. The stock feels very soft, but very snappy, which is a great thing to have. I love that. Um, thicker decks were primarily my favorite, but now that crushed stock, or extra crushed stock, whatever it may be, exists, Damn do I love this because it just feels so good and broken in. You no longer have to waste the finish while you're breaking in a deck of cards. Cool, let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the cards. Here are the two jokers. The jokers are the same thing as what was on the back of the tuck case, except you do have a joker right there in the card. And then on the other joker, you do have the two of clubs, and then you read joker on each corner. The Ace of Spades reminds you of the Black Tiger deck, doesn't it? 
So a lot of this deck will have uh, a lot of reminiscent feels towards illusionist older decks as well as uh, some little hints of um, the company. Now I don't know everything, um, I can probably spot three things that I know right off the top of my head. For example, this is very reminiscent of the Black Tigers deck. Right, the pips are very nice. Uh, they kind of remind me, and not completely, but kind of remind me of Dan and Dave's Smoke and Mirrors, the original um, perfect pips. If you go back to see my um, Smoke and Mirrors V6 review, you will see how what I'm talking about. Very sharp, very pointy pips. Two of spades, let's put that ace of spades back in there. Uh, as we keep spreading through, you will start to see the court cards. Nothing too special there. And uh, I don't know if the faces have a representation of a certain magician. Here's the ace of diamonds. To me, that looks a lot like the artifice joker which is pretty cool. Then you get like the ghost deck look up here with the uh, blank pips. So that's, you know, sort of, again, hinting at some of their other products. Go through the cards, as mentioned, you kind of get that ghost deck vibe throughout. Keep going through them. Court cards, pretty much emptied out. And as you can tell, some of the pips are not, it looks like only the, uh, so far the, the hearts and diamonds are the only ones that have that ghost vibe. And then you, you can kind of start to see that the, uh, these cards are filled in with, with, uh, with red, which is kind of cool to just take a look at how each of the cards are different. And these are empty. And then we'll take a look at the ace of hearts. And that looks like a clown nose. Greatness starts somewhere, is what that says. And then you get a double backer, and obviously with my hands, we start to bow the extra two of clubs. So that's one of the complaints I have, is that this deck is really thin, so don't leave it still for too long in your hands, because that's what happens. Just with the heat of the palm. Cool, uh, we've gone through the deck of cards. I don't think I showed you the ace of clubs. Let's go look for that. That's the one that I missed. There's the Ace of Clubs. Very reminiscent of the, uh, what has that pip? I believe it's the the Black, uh, was it the Black Artifice deck? I believe so. But uh, pretty cool, pretty cool deck nonetheless, right? The faces are pretty cool. I would definitely use this deck for magic. I would definitely bust this deck out and do some tricks and even some cardistry. That being said, we will take a look at how this deck handled. It's thin stock is going to allow the cards to slide around very nicely. It's not thick, um, and the cards do feel very good in the hands. The deck is about a day old, and take a look at how it looks. Very brand new, I have not used it, have not broken it in. Here's a spring. Very nice and easy and controllable. Obviously everybody can do a ripple shuffle, but they're very snappy, it goes back into place very easily. A fan will be great as well. Let's, let's give that another go. 
Pretty slippery, let's try that again. The fans are great. The thin stock, the thin borders, everything goes with each other just nice. It complements each other very nice. I like the minimal look to it as well. I mean, because when you fan it, um, you still get a nice look, a nice decent look, nothing too overwhelming. And then in terms of it being used for cardistry, the packets don't really stick together too well just because, as mentioned, it is pretty slippery, but it is very manageable. Overall, that is the Illusionist deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. It was a little fast, maybe a little sloppy. I'll try to make it a point to get better at them, but that is pretty much what concludes the deck. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I am awaiting Chris Ramsey's first playing cards. Those will also be reviewed, as well as the Virtuoso Fall Winter 2017 deck. I currently have it, have not done a review on it, um, but that should be coming shortly as well. Let me know what deck of cards you wanna see next down in the comments below. I have a huge deck collection. That, all, that video should also be coming very soon. Guys, have a great day. Boy, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care, I'm out.